guys. Welcome to my messy kitchen. Don't judge me too hard. I know it's been a really long time since my last video. I deeply apologize for that. Um, the fact is that finals happened and that's my day job. And I just had to focus on that for a while. And now today, um, I'm sick, but I still felt like doing stuff. And I was getting ready to do what's called an echo print or an eco print. And I thought, why well, should not do this for the YouTube channel? So you'll probably see me here kind of halfway in the frame, halfway out of the frame um, as I go along in this. But I was got it started and then I thought, um, why don't I film this for you guys? Um, so I will be finishing that sewing tutorial stuff and working on that again. But, you know, this is sure to make stuff. So I don't just sew. I do all kinds of other things. So here in this video, we're going to do some fiber art um, kind of stuff. And I'm pretty excited about this. And I hopefully it will turn out. So let me catch you up to what I've done so far because I wasn't smart enough to start this at the very beginning of the process. But what I did was I found this really great gigantic enamel pot at the thrift store like I'd been thinking about doing these prints anyway and this just seemed like you know this was meant to be when I found this pot because it is ginormous and it is practically new um, which is super exciting so in here I've got it about half full of water um, and then I dumped in probably about so this is probably two or three gallons of water in here. This is a giant pot. There's probably two gallons of water in here. Um, and in there, I threw about a cup of just plain old white vinegar. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can get it anywhere. Literally bought that in the dollar store. Um, and I soaked the paper in there. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the um, colors and imprints from plants uh, to imprint themselves onto paper, which is actually pretty exciting. And they turned out, the ones I've seen on the internet have turned out really, really cool. Um, so I'm kind of excited to start this and to try it. And what the vinegar is, is the vinegar acts as a mordant. What that does is that opens up the fibers um, so that it can take the dye mole molecules. Um, any dye molecules that come out of the plants can then go into the fiber um, and then you rinse it under cold water at the end um, and that seals the fibers back up and it kind of holds on to that and makes it permanent. Um, now I've dyed a lot of fabric before so this is essentially the same principle as dyeing fabric. If you've ever um, done that then you kind of get this. So it's, it's just a general kind of um, plant fiber dyeing process. You're just using plants. Now I'm using a bunch of plants that I picked out of my garden yesterday, so they're a little wilty. Again, feeling kind of sick. Um, but we're gonna try those. And I saw one dude on YouTube used, um, hold on. <clears throat> my really grubby dyeing supplies. So one dude on YouTube used some indigo writ dye. And of course I don't have writ dye, but I have some pro chemical and dye left over from some of the wool dyeing and stuff that I've done. So he threw some of that in his pot and it seeped into the edges and then the plants kind of acted as a resist. So you, if even if the plant didn't impart any dye, Onto the onto the fibers itself, it did implant um, the imprint. It acted as a resist, and so then this dye couldn't get in anywhere where that plant was, and that was very interesting to me. So I'm gonna play around with that as well. So let me move these out of our way because we don't need those just yet. So since I am using a commercial dye, um, I'm gonna be putting salt in. Nobody said anything about putting salt into their dye baths as they were doing this. Um, but what salt does is it ionizes the water. At least this is what I learned in grad school. Uh, my grad teacher taught me that salt ionizes the water and that so it makes it the dye molecules repel out of the water and it makes the, the fabric or whatever more attractive. 
So I'm going to dump some salt in this dye bath too once I get kind of everything in there. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. So um, I was out of washing soda because I thought I would try it with washing soda. That's typically what I use um, as my caustic agent. Um, but a lot of people were using either alum or vinegar and they were getting decent results. Um, so I, was, I thought, well, I got vinegar. I can get vinegar at the dollar store. I'll just get that and we'll move on with our lives. Found some string in my studio. God only knows where this came from. So we'll use this to tie up the bundle. Um, so yeah, so let's get this party started. So I pre-soaked my paper. Um, this is um, not sponsored, but this is B um, brand 100% cotton um, watercolor paper. So it's nice and hardy. It can absorb the water. It's a cotton fiber. It's not a wood pulp um, watercolor paper. So we should get as good a results as we can get out of this. Pre-soaking it does a couple of things. It kind of pre-moistens and loosens up those fibers and gets them going. And I pre-moistened it in uh, as hot a water as my tap would get out, which is pretty hot. I have my hot water heater set up really high because I dye fabric and things. So um, I put really, really hot water in here. And again, about a cup of vinegar for it to kind of get the fibers kind of juicy and ready to go. So um, what you do is, and this is just that grid fabric. Can you see that? It's just this fabric that has a grid printed on it. There you go. It's this fabric that's got a grid print on it. It's really thin. You can get this at Joann's. It's super cheap. I use it sometimes for making patterns on or tracing out patterns when I'm sewing. But it's also good for this kind of stuff. Because what we want to do is we want to get this in a tight bundle um, and have all of this together and kind of held together. Some people have used wood to kind of clamp it together and then put it in their dye bath. But I'm worried about that wood acting as a resist as well. Where this, if I tie this up into a bundle, this fabric will be somewhat permeable and the dyes will be able to get through. Because I don't want to put too many things like, I don't want to impede this coming through, but also this paper is going to get delicate and fragile as it gets wet. So it does need to be, you know, kind of bound together and, and you want the plant life to be pressed against it as hard as possible. So anyway, it's all kinds of sciencey things going on. And then underneath that, I just have a old towel that's um, folded up so it's nice and absorbent so I don't get any water or vinegar at this point I'm just it's just water and vinegar and paper so it's okay that I'm working on my counter once I include that dye in there then that's game off then nothing none of this will touch the counters or anything again I'll take this into my studio when I go to unbundle it so I'm not around because then it's no longer food safe I'm wondering you know I've used kool-aid to dye wool yarn before and I wondered if you couldn't do this with kool-aid but that was an animal fiber, and I don't know that it would be that useful on a plant fiber. Plant fibers act very differently from animal fibers, so I don't know. So anyway, so in front of you here, kind of behind you, I have like all of my very wilty garbage out of the, and trust me, this is pretty much all garbage. Very few actual like things, and they're a little sad because they sat overnight for all about them. I was just not feeling well, man. But this is like... Uh, all eaten up by bugs and stuff. So I thought that might be cool. Like, look how cool that is. Like, it's got this lacy-like texture. I have slugs in my garden, y'all, and it is the struggle is real. All right, so I'm going to put some plant life actually down because I want both sides to be printed and have cool stuff on it. I plan on binding this into a book. So... And a lot of people were like loading these up, which kind of looked cool. Um, I will do some of that, but I also want to be kind of, I don't know. If you know me, you know I'm a little OCD. So I got these. These are grape hyacinths. Reggie actually gave these to me ages ago before we started dating. And so and now you can't see what I'm doing down here. So I'm going to pause reposition and see if I can't get you closer so you can see what I'm doing down here. So hold the phone. Okay, that's better. You can see more clearly what I'm getting at here, what I'm on to. So um, 
here is my workable area. Um, I'll be grabbing plant life and bringing it in and kind of moving it around. Um, and yeah, and we'll just kind of see what happens. So we're just going to build up a big old sandwich of paper and plant life and more paper and more plant life. So I got more of these little guys, more of these little guys. If I sneeze a lot, I apologize in advance because I already feel one coming on and all this, these like weirdo, terrible plants in my house are not making things easier because I've got like things that are like definitely a weed, like these gross things grow in my garden so much. Oh, Kevin, if you see this, tell me what this is. Kevin Collins, my, my friend who knows plants. These grape hyacinth are cute, though. And I'm hoping that, you know, we can get something good. These set my allergies off. Terrible, terrible, terrible. You know what? I almost want just these. I'm like, I kind of want simple. You know what I mean? I don't want it like... I don't know. I'll have some kind of busier, but some I want just simple. So let's do that one just simple. And we'll see what happens. Oh, I can just press it down. And then let's come back in here with these terrible weeds that oh, are making my nose itch. But look how pretty they are. They are a pretty leaf. Man, like look at all the veining in that. That's so interesting, right? I know, I shouldn't think weeds are pretty. You know, coming off the edge, that's just good composition, right? Maybe some up, some down. Because the veiny side is what's really going to give you an imprint. And, I, and most people that I saw doing this were getting kind of greens and yellows and golds. Oh, also, you can... Um, make what do they call it you can take a jar and put something rusty in it um and some vinegar with it and let it sit for a week like some water rusty items and um we'll just let it kind of steep for a week and you'll make this like rusty tea kind of thing and you can infuse that into your dye bath and that will apparently do sciency interacting with the plant life things and um, make the colors interact differently. See, this is kind of dimensional. I hate these too. I can't get rid of these either. These onions, these decorative onions. They're pretty for like two minutes and then you're mad at them because they're everywhere. Like you got, you got one and then you got like a hundred. There's no middle ground with these things. Can't just have one. So I grabbed a bunch of these thinking I was thinking that it would be cool and now I'm thinking I have way more paper than I have plant life but that's okay we will make do and of course I have grass growing in my garden don't judge me my garden is in really bad shape right now y'all anybody wants to come over and help me with it you are more than welcome because it needs some love Boy and I are going to get to it one of these days. Let's get a couple of these going off the edge. Like, we always get it together before June hits, usually. Although, it's almost June, so how am I living my life? Don't even know. Let's make some of these tall. I'm, like, reaching right in front of you where you can't see what I'm doing. Oh, my nose. Are you just ever, like, get mad? Because your nose is, like, driving you crazy. That's been me. I've just been, like, scratching my nose and blowing my nose. Like, if there are weirdo breaks for no reason, it's probably because I went to go blow my nose. All right. That one's kind of cool. Like, I have no idea how these are going to turn out. No idea. Never done this before. Just learned about it. So, super excited to try it. So that's why, I mean, I'll do that one. I'll leave that one a little overcrowded. But in general, I want to kind of leave them a little, not sparse, 
but distinct. Does that make sense? Have the leaves all distinct from each other and from themselves. I'll just create these little... Man, I should have gotten fresh stuff. If I was feeling better, I would have. It was raining today. I don't want to go out in the rain. Because I'm kind of a big baby when I'm sick. Reggie will attest to that, I'm sure. All right. I love this. That's cute. Oops. Tore that one a little too short. Oh, well. Don't tell anybody on me. All right. I want to keep that. I like that. I like that. Maybe I'll pull that one down a little bit more. I'll let it span entirely across. I engage at least three edges, right? So I tell my students, engage at least three edges. You know what I'm going to leave? These stems are like... These stems are like... I don't even know what. You could build a house out of these things. Like when they dry out, they get so woody. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to... I'm not just a going to... And I'm going to do... Maybe... Oh, I got some dandelions that are really wilted, but they were nice and fresh yesterday. But I couldn't get new ones of these because Reggie mowed the lawn. So, which, I mean, yay, lawn needed to be mowed really, really badly. But that means my dandelions are all gone. And I know people don't like dandelions. When I was a little kid, I could never understand why people didn't like dandelions because they were these pretty yellow flowers that would show up in your yard for free. And my mom was never fussy in the yard. By that I mean she did zero gardening. Love you, Mom. She's watching now. She found out how to use YouTube. So, uh, hi, Mom. She figured it out. She found me. So no more talking about my mom, you guys. Just kidding. Oh, I like this one. That's kind of cute, isn't it? That's kind of cute, isn't it? Any more? I have more dandelions in here somewhere. Where'd they go? I have my rig out here from my studio. I have it in the kitchen. This one is almost done, but I kind of like that about it. So let's try that one. Let's try that one. Maybe a few of these grassy things hanging off the other edge. Hear that? That's my Bay City accent. Hanging out. Long A's. Hanging out. All right. Comes out every once in a while. All right. Cool. I like that. All right. I'm just going to keep doing this. So I'm going to stop talking. Reggie will probably fast forward through the rest of this. And then we will get to the end of this process. Okay, so this is the last one. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to make my bundle. And so I'm just going to take this fabric and I'm just going to fold it over. And I want to keep it fairly snug. Fairly snug. Oh yeah, I got more than enough fabric. More than enough. I kind of eyeballed how much I was going to need when I was in my studio. I mean, we used this for steaming fabrics and all kinds of stuff when I was in grad school. All right, I'm going to take some of this string and I'm just going to start tying it up. I'm going to start here because it wants to flop open. So you start tying up your package. 
you could do one long piece of string, but you know, when you're trying to wrangle something that's kind of ornery, like this is, that was starting to be, so you just got to make it simple on yourself. So I'm just going to tie this one down first, just to kind of get things in place. And now I will wrap around okay sorry I walked away from you guys the pizza guy was here and that was my food so now we're going to continue on I'm feeling energized and I mean there's a little bit of playroom here I mean I don't know what I'm doing really but this has been sitting out for probably close to 20 minutes that's probably the upside of how long you want to leave this sitting out, really, because you don't want this paper to dry, because then why did you soak it, right? Like, why even bother? You are going to just let it dry out. Okay, so I'm going to tie this up. There was, somebody else did this, and they just had this beautiful grid pattern that they'd wound the, the yarn in or the string in. And look at me, I'm just like all over the place. Like a butcher from the 1920s, right? Here's your ham hock, lady. All right. So that's done. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to prepare the pot. All right. So here's our pot. Again, it's about half full of water. Um, and I don't want to just put this in there. Um... I don't want to just put this in there and have it like sink to the bottom and maybe burn or what have you. So I have one of these, which these are meant for canning magical people who can things. Um, I do not can, but what these are also great for is these are great for keeping your package off the bottom of your pot so it does not scald or burn. And you've got these handy dandy little handles so you can pull it in and out. So if you see one of these in the thrift store, I really recommend it. Oh, and you know what I could do? I've been thinking, because <clears throat> everybody's been kind of putting something heavy on top of these as well to hold it down to the bottom of the pot because this is just paper and it wants to float like it's a light package. But I could kind of tie this to my rack here. I think that's a terrible idea. Should I do this? Let's find out what happens if I do it. What's the worst that happens? I ruin everything. I don't have another video for you for another week. I lose the 100 subscribers I have now. I fall into a pit of depression and I turn to alcohol and drugs to kill the pain. Literally, that is the worst case scenario. I don't think any of that will happen. You guys won't leave me. I have faith in you. Please be patient with me as I get into a habit of recording. Am I even where you can see what I'm doing? Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm tying this down. And I'm going to tie it a couple of different... I'm going to tie it this way too. Got it this way. I'm going to tie it this way, too, so that way it won't just, like, slide out. Although it's pretty firmly in there. But why not? What's the worst thing that can happen? I already talked about what the worst thing is that could happen. That's not going to do it. So, let me do this. Cue the music. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing. Uh, hey, Jake. What are you doing? You gotta go potty? What's up, Jakey Pants? Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> Jakey Pants. Jakey. Jake. What's up, Jakey Pants? What's up? You gotta go potty? You gotta go outside? All right, hold on, you guys. I got a beagle on loose. 
Okay, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Oh, yeah. So I have this now pretty firmly tied to my wire rack. So now that will hold it down in the water, I think. So let's let's find out if that's true. And I'm going to have to push it down, see if it'll stay down once all the air gets out of there. I might still have to set something down on top of it. <clears throat> all right, let me problem solve. Well, that didn't work at all. So let me problem solve and I'll come right back. Okay. Okay, I have problem solved. Um, so this is Visions by Corning. This is Pyroceram. It's not actually glass. It's just clear. It's the same thing that the white Corning stuff is. It's just clear. Um, it looks like glass, but it's not actually just glass. Um, this can take oven temperatures. Um, so this is going to go on top. And that will weight down my thing. All right, let me show you that. So let's walk over here and see what it looks like. So that's what we have. We have our rack. We have our thingy inside. And then this is on top. And we will just have to monitor that. Okay. Heading back over. Hopefully I'm not making you too dizzy. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So now I'm going to dump in some salt. And I got to tell you, I've been pretty not really measuring things out with this because, I don't know, because I don't know what I'm doing because I've never done this before. And this isn't. So there's probably about a half a cup of salt left in here. I used to drive my ex-boyfriend nuts because there was never salt in the house. Because this is what I do. This is probably... Based on the feel, if it's an eighth of a cup, I'd be surprised. I think that's just a couple tablespoons. So that was just for good measure. All right. So we've ionized the water. We have changed the polarity. Um. So now I want to do dye. So hold on just a second. All right. So this is from Pro Chemical and Dye. This is some of their MX reactive dyes. Um, so I'm just going to take, usually you do this by weight, but I'm not going to weigh that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to take a little bit. The stuff a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this. This is the turquoise, which is one of my favorite colors, because look at how gorgeous that is already. Now I've just got a little bit of warm water in here, just enough to dissolve. And this is a little old Ziploc container that I don't use for food anymore. So this is fine for me to do this. Do not use something that you're going to use for food ever again. And you want to get all of the gritty. You know that gritty? You want to get all that gritty out of there. So you slowly mix it. Oh, man. My fibers instructor from college is watching this. She's probably having a heart attack. Like I didn't measure the water. I didn't measure anything. I just kind of threw it in there. But you want to slowly, slowly mix this up. Look, this is totally experimentation. All right. That looks... You want to look and see if there's any little grains anywhere. And I don't see any little grains. All right. I'm going to dilute this down a little bit with a little more water. All right, so this is diluted down with some more water. You can still, it's still really rich and pigmented. So now we are going to take this to our dye pot. Mm, it's exciting. All right, y'all. There was an epic flaw in my plan. This... This would be great if I didn't care about using this to cook with again, because I forgot I'm putting the dye in. I want to cook with this, so I can't use this to weight down the things. But,
I have rusty things. Oh, look at all the rusty things. And they are rusty, brother. Let me tell you what. So I'm going to put these in the dye pot to weight down our stuff. <laughs> so let's go take a look in theory those will also help dye and interact and do wonderful things it would be better if i had prepped it which i did not do but we will take what we will get we will take whatever happens all right so my pot is on it is heating up I don't really know if I should put the dye in now. If I put the dye in now, I mean, it's going to... So after you get this heated up and it comes to a boil, you turn it down until it gets to a simmer. And then you let it, let it go for, like, two hours. Like, this is a long, like, make sure you've got some time kind of process. So, like, the lighting will change in here when you see me again. So I guess I'm going to put the dye in now. Because it doesn't really matter. It's going to cook for a long time. If this was like a typical dye job, all right, we'll just do that. Let's do that. All right. So in the dye goes, and I'm just going to kind of foosh it around. And then I'm going to rinse my little bowl out with the water. And I'm not going to worry about mixing this up too much. It's going to boil. It's going to kind of do its thing. And that will, that will mix this up pretty well. So I'm not going to worry about that so much. I think, I think we're good to go. I think we're good to let this, I let it come to a boil. Again, turn it down. Then let it simmer for like two hours. So the next time you see me, it's probably going to be in those, for you, it'll be like, in, I'll be like, and then we'll do that. Let's do that. That's kind of fun. What? You think you get a cookie now because you went outside? Is that what this is? I don't give in to terrorists. You think you get a cookie now? Is that what you're telling me? All right, fine. We'll get a cookie. Okay, so it is several hours later. Um, I turned the pot off and it's cooling down right now. Uh, full disclosure, um, I did some homework while I was kind of waiting for the water to come to a boil and stuff. And it occurred to me I, I, that the vinegar just wasn't sitting right with me. I just kept thinking, that's not right. That's not going to work um, as a mordant with a cellulose fiber or with a uh I'm sorry with a plant-based fiber and so I watched a few more videos and I read up a little bit more and I was right um I really needed some alum to use as a mordant um the vinegar is useful for um rusting the metal which will work could work as a mordant or may help the mordant but I mean, I would have had to let it sit for like a week and all this kind of stuff. Like, anyway, there's just a lot of like chemically things going on um, and it just wasn't going to work. So uh, as I went back through kind of some YouTube videos, I saw the people who had really good results were the ones that had bought the alum. The ones that got so-so to poor results were the ones that just went with the vinegar. So I went to the store. Um... And I got some alum from my local store. And I dumped in a couple tablespoonfuls. Um, and that should be enough. Again, I haven't been measuring all this out, but that should be enough to take care of things. So now it's just a matter of dumping out the water and seeing what we've got. So let's get the pot and let's do that. Yeah, see, so when I put the alum in... The water got nice and cloudy, which is more what I was expecting. Um, so that told me that there was some chemical reactions going on. When before that, the water was way too clear. So...
Always pour away from yourself. Don't burn yourself or others. Ah, oh, that looks really green. I bet that was the, the orangey rust. Probably changed that to more of a green color. Alright, pull my metal pieces out. Move this where you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pulling all my metal pieces out, which aren't so rusted anymore. That vinegar cleaned them off fairly well. And then I'm going to a ginormous bolt and an ancient hammerhead. Now this is super hot. It's been boiling for like two and a half hours. So be careful. And I'm just gonna snip all these threads on our package and release it from its bonds. Oh, you guys, I'm so excited to see this, aren't you? Are you excited? Can you not stand it? So all of that residue, that's all the rust that you're seeing there from the weights I put on top. But, oh, you guys, I think it did stuff. Ooh, look. <laughs> it smells like a salad in here. <laughs> it really does. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. So a couple different thoughts. <coughs> Some people said rinse right away. Some people said let it dry let, and then, or let it cool down and then rinse. I'm going to rinse right away just because it will help get all that vegetable matter off. Um, and it's all like slimy and like overcooked asparagus. Oh, it, also, it smells like spinach. That's what it smells like. Because of the vinegar. So cool water. And I've got this stuff in the sink so that I'll keep any of it from trying to go down my drain. But look at that, y'all. Wow. What a cool bunch of colors. So the purples, so the purple is probably the oxidiz oxidization of the rust, the iron oxide re in, uh, reacting with the flowers. Oh, those are the flowers. That was these, these annoying onion things. Wow, that looked, turned out really cool. I have nude respect for these. All right, let's look at the rest of them. My towel over here to kind of accept things out of my way. <clears throat> Alright, I have a folded towel over here to accept all of our prints. So let's see what we got. Ooh. Born in water. Look at that. That's very cool, huh? Oh, and the other side's nice and delicate. So this is a cold press, so it's very textured on one side and not so much on the other. Very interesting. I love that you can see the stems. You see that? Isn't that cool? Yeah, I'm super happy with this. Look how this edge picked up that turquoise. I could have done more blue dye, but now I know for next time. This one's real subtle, but so I saw, so I read too that you could then do some iron oxide, and this might darken up when it dries. 
But you could then do an iron oxide bath and you could dip these in and it will darken up all of these. I mean, that looks like feathers, doesn't it? Cool. Ooh. That's really neat. So some of these are really subtle. Look at that. You see that? Is it focused? It's actually got quite a bit of detail on it. You can really see like the subtle veining. Oh, let me get it where it's not getting a shadow or a highlight. Look at all the veining in that leaf. It's cool. And so you don't have to scrub these or anything. You're just getting the plant life off and just you don't have to neutralize these or anything like that. It's not fabric. If you've ever dyed fabric, you know, you have to neutralize it or, you know, wash it with some uh, soap of some sort. This you don't have to do because it's paper. Lots of strong yellows. I think I'm really glad I put that, um, what you call it in. You know, the what you call it. The iron pieces. Glad I had that epiphany. Cool, strong stems again. Interesting. So again, some are better than others. This is a total, ew, ew, gross. Total experiment. Glad I used watercolor paper too. I mean, you know, there are a lot of crafters out there that are like, hey, you can do this on cheap paper, but why set yourself up for disaster? I believe in setting myself up for success. So if I have better materials, then I'm not fighting those materials and they're not fighting me. You know what I mean? Look at all that. As it comes in and out of focus. I think it's the glare throwing my camera off. That's cool. Look at all the color. That green and the teal from the dye coming in. That was really cool. And the teal down here. You guys. Stop it. Hold the phone. That's a dandelion. That's that onion that I'm... Stop with the losing the focus. These are my grape hyacinths. You guys, that is just so cool. I'm going to frame that one. Hoping these are dry for tomorrow. Well, remember I told you I had more dandelions and I couldn't find them? Yeah, I found them when I tossed the rest of the the foliage that I didn't use. Yeah, they were all just closed up because I picked them yesterday. Wow, look at that. That's cool. Okay, so I gotta think about this. Like, some of these really, really came out well. Look at that. That's cool. That's really cool. I think those are maple leaves. I think that's what that purple is. Those are stacked maple leaves on top of each other. Oh, no, they're whatever these are. And maple. There's a couple maple in here. Alright. Well, the maple left yellow, which you will see in a minute here. Like, can you see that? Look at that. That was a maple leaf. And then this is a whatever the hell else that is. I said a bad word. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey, that maple leaf. What am I going to do with these? I think I'm going to bind a book. Using these as the leaves. Haha. -ha. Get it? Because they're leaf. Never mind. I'll see myself out. Hashtag dad jokes. Oh, I'm sad. We're almost done. 
This was literally, so I was going to use cheap watercolor paper, which I do have some, but I think I left it all at work. So, for my fiber students to use, look at that one. So cool. That's all grape hyacinth. Okay, so this is what I'm learning, is the ones where there were only a couple of things seem to really work out better. And the more layers there are, the more blurry it gets, which totally makes sense. I kind of thought that would be the case, but now it is proven. Oh, yes. Just you wait. Because look at that, mommy likes. Oh, that looks like a watercolor painting. It's so pretty. Ooh, that one got a lot of the dye. That's awesome. Sorry, pull it down so you can see it. That's awesome, you guys. Look at that. All right. Well, that's it. That's all of them. So, um, I'm going to let them dry and then I'll put up some pictures later, maybe on my Instagram or something. Um, yeah, but that's, that's the process, you guys. Now I just got to clean up and toss out all the old or compost all the old vegetation and clean up my sink area. So, you know, scrub it out so we can eat here again. And that's it. So, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, what do you think? What did I do wrong? What did I do right? Would you try this? Do you like these kinds of videos or do you just want to see sewing stuff? Or like this is kind of my plan is I want to do, you know, not just sewing stuff. I want to do other things as well um, because sewing isn't just the only thing that I do. Um, I also, right, make things like bind books and stuff like that. So, you know, is that interesting to you? Do you want to see that as well? Let me know in the comments below. Um, you know, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. That all helps me. Thanks so much. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm, this was probably a super long video, and I apologize for that. Um, but you guys have a great day, and enjoy. Okay, but seriously, like... Some of this stuff is so gross. This is why I don't eat canned vegetables. Because this is what canned vegetables are. Right? This is hot, goopy. Ugh. So gross. Like, yeah, I have a little bit of a strong stomach to do this. It totally smells like canned spinach. Totally smells like canned spinach.